Father, we want to thank you for another beautiful day. We thank you for the love that you have for us. And we thank you for the opportunity to serve the Cherokee people and the Cherokee Nation. We ask your guidance on all that we do today. In Christ's name. Amen. Roll call. Chuck Hoskins. Don Garvin. Here. Bill Anglin. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Audra Connor. Hi. Joe Crittenden. Mary Frady. Bill Johnson. Tanner King. Hi. John Keener. Hey. Jackie Bob Martin. Hi. David Thornton. Here. Karen Watts. Hi. Phyllis Yardy. Do you have a quorum? Do you have a Okay. Approval of minutes. April 17th. Seven. Second. Second. Uh, motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Reports. Talking ladies. Diane Kelly. Thank you. Just a second. Councilman Martin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just for <coughs> clarification, I guess that I mentioned Mr. Johnson's name, Paul. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do you have some present? <laughs> it's not it's not okay, thank you. Thank you. Good point. Mr. Martin's on the ball this morning. Okay, sorry about that, Diane. That's all right. Take off. Um, we, this past month, from the last time that I reported, I was in Dallas at a regional meeting uh, for Job Corps. Uh, changes are coming. Uh, of course, we know changes will change again after we have our presidential election, depending on which way it goes. If it's a Republican or if it goes back to a Democrat, we know they'll change the performance ratings again. But uh, there's been a work group that's been working on them, and our performance standards as of July 1 will change. I'm not really sure to what extent uh, it's going to affect our center, but we know that they are coming and they will go into effect July 1. Uh, we had staff in Denver this past week, our health and wellness and uh, our drug and alcohol abuse counselor. Apparently all over the nation there's a an awareness to drugs and alcohol and they were beefing that up and making sure that all the centers had somebody in place or on contract that was working with students. Uh, also our GED and reading and math uh, teachers were also in training this past week in Denver as well. Uh, because that's part of our performance ratings on the academic side. Uh, July, we've got residential <coughs> staff and our safety director and our discipline officer. They're all going to New Orleans for training. So they're getting ready to gear up for a lot of changes coming about as of July 1. Our corporate review uh, will take place in September. This is the last leg of our five-year contract. Uh, Don Vaughn and his staff have worked with us this past year to do a corporate review. We will be doing a corporate review of the Health and Wellness Center, and Don will be assisting the Health Department, Dr. Gloria Grimm, and some of her staff will be going over to work with our Health and Wellness. Uh, they're uh, providing our Health and Wellness care right now at the center, as well as the mental health, and they're going to go in and look at our PRH and our regulations and determine ways in which they can assist us with uh, some of the services that they have to offer uh, because of the population which is over there. And then we have our own wellness center, which is built there at the center. Uh, we received our grant award letter this last week designating us as a contractor, not as a grantee. When you compare Job Corps with all the programs at Cherokee Nation, all the programs at Cherokee Nation, most of them are grants. And with the Job Corps Center, that's a contract. It's a five-year contract. And every year they give you an option year. So we're in the last leg of a five-year contract. So we've received our option year. And uh, we will start working on our five-year plan uh, in November, which is due in March of 08. And of course, factors that have to be looked at are our IDC cost, our fringe benefit rates, in comparison with other job force centers. And uh, Callie and uh, the staff are working with us to try to massage that so that we can uh, be very competitive to maintain the center. Um, we visited last week in Oklahoma City uh, with the workforce office up there. We've moved to the new workforce office off the interstate. And uh, we also were at the Capitol on Wednesday. It was Strawberry Day at the Capitol, but it was also our 11th Annual Job Corps Legislative Day at the Capitol. Our Job Corps centers were there from the Guthrie, Talking Leagues, Treasure Lake, and uh, Tulsa. 
we were able to visit with the new Lieutenant Governor, Jerry Askins. One of the things that she's going to do is to work with the Department of Corrections on some of those students that are in juvenile uh, care to work with the Job Corps Centers, especially when they come out with some sort of a training to partner with us on that. Uh, the uh, Deputy Director for the Commerce Department, Norma Noble, she also met with us uh, to launch a springboard for some of the governor's initiatives with employment and training and how we can work closer with business. And uh, specifically, the uh, prior industrial park was talked about in the new Google and uh, uh, Gatorade company that's going in up there. Uh, we're the only tribe and we're the only job course center that's certified uh, to give certificates for the work keys. We found that out at our regional meeting. We also found that at a state workforce meeting. And uh, we're very fortunate because we uh, also have staff that are certified through the state to do that. Uh, Mr. Hussman has been out. Uh, his father is very ill. Uh, he broke his hip and he's not very, doing very well. In fact, they don't expect him to live. Mr. Hussman has been out for the last several weeks with his dad. He is on center today. Joyce Rose has been our acting center director for the last couple of weeks. Uh, students will be out during the first part of July. They'll start uh, going home for the summer break the last week in June, and they'll be out for two weeks in the summer. And we've got staff that will be in training during that time period. A uh, week before last, um, several of the staff uh, traveled to Tulsa to participate in the State Workforce Conference. Larry Ketcher served on the planning committee, and then I was one of the presenters, uh, presented the one-stop concept for tribes and how we partner with the state workforce. Uh, good contacts were made and we're doing a lot of follow-up with the uh, Motec in Stillwater to work on some classes for tourism, uh, food service, and also looking at the trucking piece. So uh, there were some good contacts made. I asked George Roach to come over <coughs> to personally invite you to our graduation Monday night. I'll let him tell you a little bit about that and he can tell you a little bit about what they're doing with basic skills and work keys. And that concludes my report after he's finished. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I think I know everybody, but again, my name is George Roach, and I'm the manager of the GED Department and Career Literacy Center. We have six centers, as you guys probably know, and they are Salisaw, Stillwell, Jay, Pryor, Catoosa, and Tahlequah. In, in our, in our uh, centers, we have a GED program which we invite probably 16-year-olds all the way up to 92-year-olds that wants to get their GED. And so our centers are open from 8 to probably 8 in the evening. Uh, well, it's an open enrollment and they can come any time. <clears throat> it's coming Monday night at Talking Leaf Job Court at 6.30. We invite you to come. We're having a reception ceremony for the uh, participant that received their GED. So um, it's at the Talking Leaf Job Corps, uh, beginning at 6.30, and it's going to be a good reception. So hopefully you guys can come out and join us. Uh, secondly, the basic skills, <coughs> excuse me, is from 14 to 21 year olds. Uh, what we do there is provide uh, reading, math, and language skills to our students who is, is in need. Uh, so, uh, that's during the summertime for about eight, nine weeks. Uh, it's a four-hour course, and we they get a lot of uh, educational opportunities during the summertime for that. So uh, that's a short uh, about what we're doing at this time. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Any questions, comments? You should be getting an invitation, or you should already receive one by now. Uh, so again, it's Monday night. Talking with the Leave Job Corps six thirty, and I'm hoping to see you there. Okay, thank you very much. Thank for you. The <clears throat> Executive Director Report, Dr. Neil Martin. Thank you, Chairman Garvin, and greetings to Council Members. You have a um, blue packet that has uh, brief reports about uh, four of the items which I'll be talking about, or five. The first one. We hosted the first annual Cherokee Nation Science and Engineering Fair uh, last week, and it was a rousing success with 60-some uh, entries. You have a, a little uh, brief description of the uh, fair. I think there are several things that are particularly uh, significant about this. 
Number one would be the uh, number and qualification of the judges. We had judges everywhere from uh, uh, Rochester, New York, from Salt Lake City, Utah, Dallas, Texas, uh, OSU, Stillwater. Uh, all of those judges came free of charge. And several of them presented additional awards in addition to the Cherokee Nation Awards. Attached to that list is a general summary of the different categories by middle school and high school and the winners by name and also by school. So you may want to check those that are that are in your district. Very well attended uh, very, very good conference. Can I add to that? Sure. Chairman Garvin? Yes. Um, thank you again to you and Daniel and everybody else that made this possible. And a special thanks to the Cultural Resource Center for the tribally oriented awards mm -hmm. um, and those pots that were made possible yeah. from Jane Austen because that just, I mean, you should have seen the parents and the kids' faces. But, um, I just want to make sure that I was the only council person in attendance and the, um, I wanted to note from the self-help perspective that Rebecca Ward is one of our graduate student recipients, scholarship recipients, and she actually did her time for her scholarship through that so day through that day, and went through uh, Mary Mead in our volunteer office. And then um, some of our own staff. And Dr. Paul Shipman is somebody that uh, has his PhD in zoology and is currently a professor, but he hopes to come back and do work. And then we left off a doctor, Dr. Jim Smay, who's from Stillwell, Oklahoma, and funds some of the activities at Sequoia High School through a National Science Foundation grant that he has and has really tries to bring in some different things and additional resources. Um, and then you should add fifty dollars because I wrote two fifty dollar checks for the engineering okay. deal on that day. But it was just outstanding, and I think it was a great example of how self help and matching volunteer hours we brought additional resources <laughs> into the tribe. Daniel did an outstanding job for the first year, and all of the participants <coughs> received a scientific calculator just for participating. And that just lit up those kids' faces, and several parents talked about how incredible that was because they knew they were going to have to buy those for school, and they didn't know how they could afford it. And so through their participation, they did that. And I hope that I guess our second one is tentatively scheduled for January 2008. That's right. So I hope that I see everybody there judging because that was just outstanding to see the questions that they asked because they were all pertinent questions to either their home life or like our communities and things that are impacting our communities and they were trying to look at, at examining what the problems were and looking at bringing real world solutions and to me that's exciting that more than just people who are elected to look at those things or people who are paid on our staff to look at those things that means the kids and then their families will look at those things and try to figure out how to fix things locally so I mean I could just so anyway, thank you so much, and thank you for this council for making it possible, and for Chief Smith and the Education Department, because it was just incredible. And we'll have pictures, I think, at some point, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And we'll make that correction on the, uh, on the contribution. Uh, Jim is on the list. We just failed to list his title. As doctor. <coughs> and by the way, uh, Dr. Spray has been listed as one of the 25 rising young professors in America in, in science. He was given an award by the president yeah. this past year for outstanding engineer scientist work. <coughs> he had to go to D.C. for that. It, it's just awesome. And he's a former uh, Cherokee Nation scholarship recipient. So that makes it even better. <laughs> so it was it was win-win all the way on that one. The next uh, item is uh, the higher education funding history, which you'll have. Yes, uh, Chairman. Yes. Yeah, a couple, couple call, comment. Uh, on your nursing program, mm -hmm. we added $110,000 last night to this program. 
Fantastic. For you to add as many students that you can get slots for at Carl Albert and Connors and Roger State. Apparently there were some students that were promised uh, if they moved to Roger State they'd be funded and, and I think she was able to work it out but when I saw that there was a need for, for more money and more uh, slots. That's fantastic because if you'll notice, uh, did you notice just last week that nursing was listed as the most uh -huh. critical area in the nation? And we've got the need for them, and so anyway, I, I hope you guys jump on the ball. We can, we can do it, and I'll work with uh, Diane because Diane also has a nursing program. Would you, would you uh, have any objection to our using a portion of that money for baccalaureate degree nurses? Because that puts them into the management level. If I personally would not. I would. But if it is a consensus of the group, we'd certainly like to do that. Not for all of it, right. but just for a portion of it of the most promising students. Because after they got their, you know, their. I, I look for this program to grow and be funded. Oh, yeah. at, To about as many slots as you can find. That's right. I truly believe that, that, that that's a need for our people. It's a need. And you know they can walk out of that even a two-year degree. They walk out making more money than a school teacher. You bet you. And, and they can uh, pick their climate. And hopefully they'll pick under this program. They have to pick this one for for a short while at least. And the second thing is you're getting ready to talk about this higher education funding, and everybody's going to look at the payoff side and see that in the fall of '04. The tail eligible kids only got 225. Right. And then 05, uh, they got 205. And uh, then in the fall of 06, they got 385. The reason is, it's not worth it for them to apply and go through the hoops and loops to get $200, $200 above and beyond. And so I've got it on Xavier Finance. <coughs> And I want to try to raise the funding to the Pell eligible students to a thousand dollars, just like we do the non Pell students. And uh, if the Pell is the biggest award from Pell, uh, there's been the argument: well, they already get you know books and tuition. Well, yeah, they do, but if they get the 28, they might not have shoes. And uh, so I hope this council at Executive Finance will see it in their heart to put the extra, uh, well, if we get back to, to the old level, it costs us a, a less than a million dollars to give every single college student at the high level, and it only cost us less than a half, well, only it cost us a half a million for no more students than we've got now. Right. And uh, so I hope everybody will, will pray and think about that, and I can't, I can't imagine where we could spend our money any better. Councilman yeah, Baker, there's, there's a long-term benefit to that, too, in that the extra money to a Pell student will not have a um, negative effect on the grant that they receive through Pell. Only in a rare instance would it cause them to be <coughs> overfunded. The only place where it may affect them would be it would reduce their eligibility for the amount of the loan. And any time we can keep them from borrowing money on student loans, we're also doing a service there, or you're doing a service there. Because as you all know, many of our students are suckered in too. Have that to, easy loan program. Not only suckers, but they, they don't have a choice. That's right. If they're going to go to college, they've got to, right, to make the loan. Well, that is wonderful news, and <clears throat> you allocate it, we can, we can execute it. <laughs> so that, that would be great. But this does give you a little funding history, and, and please remind uh, persons that the deadline date is June 15. And of course, from now until June 15 will be our busiest time because scholar, uh, scholarship applicants will be have access to their transcripts and they'll be coming in now. But the um, you're right. The the amount of paperwork for uh, for $300 is tremendous. 
Next item would be the Speakers Bureau. This is another venture that we, we undertook. And that was to host a meeting here in Tahlequah that would be conducted solely in Cherokee. We had uh, 120 plus our staff and immersion students who attended that uh, conference last week. Uh, it was uh, very, very interesting. I was in there for just a very few minutes just to give an overview in, in English, and then I skipped out. Councilman Baker and I both skipped out. I stayed as long as I could speak Cherokee, and then I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, the, the feedback from that has been exceedingly positive. Uh, just really. I had one employee come up to me last week uh, and said, you know, something happened from that meeting that I just, it, it's amazing. I said, I have other persons in the office who speak Cherokee. But said, since I've worked here, I've never really spoken Cherokee to them. I've just spoken English. And said, now I'm speaking Cherokee to them in the office, and they're responding, and we're carrying on conversations in Cherokee. The group decided, uh, by the way, their, their evaluation forms were cards, blank cards, and uh, I had to have uh, the majority of those interpreted because they were in a Sequoia syllabary. I think that's fantastic. Now, there, will be, there are more speakers out there than we've been led to believe that there are. And uh, we're, we're going to find them. They're going to meet uh, first Thursday of, is it first or second Thursday? Second, second Thursday of, of each month. Councilor Martin has a question. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Moore, I had planned to attend that session, but I had to attend the funeral that, mm -hmm. that morning, so I couldn't to be here, but what, uh, I got a comment uh, yesterday that the law used to have a resource committee meeting out there, and, and I thought it was interesting, and I thought it might be worthwhile uh, the suggestion this gentleman made. He said, you need a turkey speaker or something or something made interested in the, mm -hmm. the complex, regardless who comes in, speakers, whatever, to speak to them in Turkey. It's not that you're embarrassed <coughs> that uh, people, especially out of town theater, think, well, they spoke to me in the Turkey right. language, and I've heard that. You know, mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, that, that, that'd, be, that'd be good. You know? Very important. Yeah. yeah. Whether they understood it or not. They right. say, you yeah. know, hey, they talked to me. Yeah, Turkey. and, uh, yeah. Right. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And the, oh, by the way, this is what will be an ongoing thing. I think we'll have to move the next meeting to probably square you because I don't think the council chamber will uh, will hold the next group. Because everyone left saying, I'm going to tell so-and-so yeah. to come here. And we had such a, a broad representation of uh, your districts, too. Yeah. Had several elders there, and they were exceedingly pleased with the uh, immersion students. Yeah. Then the other item I have is the... Uh, Leadership forum that will be held at uh, Sequoia <laughs> on uh, Saturday the uh, 2nd. You'll be hearing, of course, more about this in, in the next week or so. It's designed uh, primarily for uh, uh, youth leadership, but because um, there had to be a change in uh, Justice O'Connor's schedule, it's a little bit past public school time. But we have several public schools who are bringing their student councils, their leadership groups, to the conference. And they will have an opportunity to uh, speak or ask questions of the panelists. And on your behalf, I went ahead and invited all of the uh, salutatorians and valedictorians to come to this conference and, and be recognized at the conference. Mr. Chairman, that uh, completes my report. Is there questions or comments? That's a good report. There's a lot going on. Uh, 
Just one comment on the valedictorian salute to us. I've presented some of those checks already, and uh, they are really thrilled that we have this program. And, uh, I think that's one program that you're going to be very happy that you introduced. I really am. All right. Thank you for the report. <clears throat> Next, we have Head Start. By the way, Caverna uh, asked me to uh, to bring a message to you that she is involved in a training program today with staff and could not make it, but she didn't have anything out of the ordinary. Thank you, sir. J O N, Dr. Shelley Butler Allen. OCO. Okay. Time out now. <laughs> um, in mid-April, we had our student spring count, and uh, to date, this is our new student spring count, JOM students in the 14-county area. We have 19,713, but that's without the Kansas count, which is, adds about 400 students. So we have approximately 20,000 students for the up-and-coming uh, funding year 07-08. Um, May 3rd, we conducted our, or we, we held our um, annual um, Cherokee Nation Cultural, um, Cherokee Cultural Competitions Awards reception. And for the first year, normally we have it in a real formal setting in a hotel in Tulsa, sit down dinner with linen tablecloths. But um, we couldn't find a facility that was large enough to house to hold all of our students and parents and grandparents. So we took a look at Sequoia. Sequoia has a, uh, the multi-purpose facility gym, has a capacity of 1,200 to 1,300 students or seating capacity. So we decided to go ahead and, and um, have it there. It was a little less formal, but all the same, the intent was there. We were honoring and showing our support and appreciation for the participation of our schools and our students that participate in our cultural competitions. We didn't have the crowd that we thought we would have because I think it probably was the time of year that we held it, which was May 3rd. We projected a thousand students, that's, or a thousand participants, attendees, and we only had about 650. So we were we were happy with that, and the students were very happy because that's when they received their awards and their certificates for participation and placing first, second, or third place. Um, last week, May the 10th, we had our um, 08 2008 JOM application workshop. Um, good attendance once again. We had about 66 um, JOM coordinators and administrators show up for the meeting. <coughs> we introduced, and we've been preparing our people within the, <coughs> the schools that we will be online, folks. All of the schools will be online for the online application. I think it's going to, I know it's going to make it easier for the schools, for the people that write the proposals, and for us to be receiving them, and for the approval process to take place. So um, kudos go to Tanya Williams and Kelly Phillips in that group right next door, down the block, for um, programming, programming it into um, a readable format for an online application. We will also, making it easier for the schools, we're going to have the JOM um, enrollment cards online also. So we kind of introduced that. Ta-da! It's here. We had our pilot testing last year, and so we're, we're going to be in full force and effect for our online, which is really good. We feel like we're keeping up with the times, or at least we're trying to. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and, of course, we're getting really, we're very, very, very busy getting prepared for our 2007 uh, Cherokee Nation Youth Leadership Institute, retra retracing Cherokee footsteps, and we will be taking an entourage of 50 students plus about 40 staff people, staff and sponsors, on the, the, the historic journey um, through our um, ancestral lands in southeast um, United States. Um, the journey will take place, we originally planned for June 3rd through June 16th, but we have upped it a day because we feel like, well the trip is, the whole trip is an opportunity of a lifetime, but on June 2nd, um, Chief Justice, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, along with a group of other people, will going to be participating in a leadership 
forum at Sequoia, the, the Sequoia new facilities. And I think this is a perfect way to kick off a leadership institute by having <coughs> the students experience and, and hearing the great leaders of our country talk about leadership in a forum. So we're going we're gonna to start out that day, the, the journey on June 2nd. We're going to be in the forum from 1 to 3, and then we'll load the buses and head on out. So pray for us. <laughs> Because, you know, the staff and sponsors and the contract people that we have coming on board really work hard, and this, as well as the students. It's a 16-hour 16 16-hour 16 day. So, first two weeks in June. So that's our schedule. Are there any questions? Any questions, comments? Thank you very much. What up? School High School, Jim Stanley. Thank you, Chairman Garvin. We've been pretty busy up there, um, but this week we're coming to a close. Our baccalaureate schedule for 6:30, and in, I hope everybody got their invitations. Uh, the announcements. They have moved the baccalaureate to the gym, the place where they play, because of the number of. We have 100 graduates, and I'm, I just don't think we're going to be able to. We've outgrown that little chapel, I'm afraid. So we've moved it over there. Graduation will be at 6.30 on Friday night. And again, I, we're checking, but we think this is the largest graduating class ever. So we've got 100 graduates. Appreciate those of you who attended our celebration on the 24th for basketball. It went very well. I had a lot of very positive comments from a lot of the community members. Um, and it was, a, it was a good day, even though it rained. Luckily, we had the tent. and uh, So everything went well. Tried to have everything in one place, and it seemed to work better. Um, we've had a busy week since the 1st of May. We had three um, teams that were in state championships that week. The girls softball were the state runner-up. They weren't even ranked and uh, came in second, so we're very proud of that. Girls in golf both went. Actually, it be four teams. Uh, and then baseball got defeated in regionals. Track went. We had our alumni banquet this past weekend, which was very successful. Had our... Uh, Regional accreditation officer come out for our audit, and we've been accredited again with no deficiencies. And we're working on getting our summer programs together, which will be the, the last two weeks in June. Um, so any of your constituents that can come out, we'd love to have all the kids that we can have up there on campus. Um, and we've got a lot of different areas, of arts, reading, math, science, Cherokee foods, health, and then all of our summer athletic programs. So we're trying to get mail outs to the schools, those that are still open. A lot of them are already out. Um, we had a 7th and 8th grade showcase, our leadership class, and those kids did an outstanding job. They wrote their own poems. They had to get up and publicly deliver those. Uh, they did some plays. It was, it was a great, great time. The money that you guys support the 7th and 8th grade, eighth grade with, I think a lot of people were kind of wondering if it was going to be a successful program. Um, but it's been very successful. Those kids have done really well. And we're in the process of post-testing and looking at testing to see how they've uh, progressed over the past year. We just received our final certificate of occupancy for the new gym, which um, Shelley indicated was 1,200 capacity. The new certificate of occupancy will allow up to 1,900 once we get a couple of adjustments made uh, with the egress, so we're excited about that. Um, and then we also re received our certificate of occupancy for our new track bleachers. So if you haven't had a chance to go by and look at those, they're, they're really awesome. Um, wound up being almost four times what we were funded for, but really awesome, very nice. And we're beginning the planning and design stage of uh, the library expansion, which we're going to expand that by 5,300 square feet, which will displace two classrooms, uh, and then there'll be construction of additional three classrooms because we requested them to come out and do uh, a space analysis, which showed that we were allowed one more classroom, so they funded that as well. Um, and then we've just we've just had a lot of neat things going on. We've done a risk assessment to see where we were at in terms of safety for our students, and we've got some things that we're going to be working on over the summer for that. Um, and we requested and received additional funding for generators for the boys' dorm, the girls' dorm, and the cafeteria. So if we have another ice storm, we're in good shape. <laughs> that was that's pretty fun. Ten o'clock, thinking we were going to have to get all those kids out of those dorms. Um, and just to let you know, we've got. 
four Gates Millennium Scholars for sure. Uh, two pages that received page of the week and one was elected governor and was allowed to get up and address the House, which we were pretty excited about that. Three boys state delegates, two girls state delegates. Um, and uh, We have one student who was accepted to West Point and the Air Force Summer Academy, so we're excited about that young man. He, he thinks that's what he wants to do, so we're definitely supporting him in that. <clears throat> And we've just got a lot of really good things that have been going on. And I just, again, I want to say I appreciate all the supplemental funding that you guys have provided because it's allowed us to do things that we would never be able to do. And we've got a school that's flying in. They're in today from um, Sherman Indian School in Riverside, California, because of the things that we're doing. They're wanting to come out and, and spend uh, today and tomorrow uh, going through the school, looking at our residential programs and our academic programs so that they can replicate some of the things that we're doing because of our success. So that's a good thing. Any questions? Gina, do we still have uh, vacancies for enrollment next year? Right now we do. Right now we do. They're coming in pretty quickly. Do what? Is it getting close to being full? We, we probably won't be taking any sophomores, juniors, or seniors. I think we're already full in that area, but we still have room for freshmen. I'm not discouraging them from submitting them because we'll go through and see what we can do, but we have done a really good job of retaining students, which is in the past we've had a pretty big turnover, and you could always bring in other kids. It's not been that way. We'll have another graduating class of 100 next year. Um, so the number of kids that come into those classes is very, very limited. We, last year we took one senior. So it's, it's a bad thing, but it's a good thing. It says we're doing a good job. Okay. Thank you for that report. Thank you. <laughs> I see no old business, no new business announcements. Next meeting is June the 12th, Tuesday. Remember, remember June the 15th and also June the 23rd. 15th uh, on scholarships, 23rd is on what? Anybody know the 23rd? It's the day before the 24th. <laughs> <laughs> That's re-election day, right. Uh, I'll entertain a moment. Public motion to go. Can I say? Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, man.